Good evening, everybody. God bless you. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Praise God. Welcome, 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 everybody. God bless you. Hallelujah. Just trying to fix something here on the computer, folks, as you're coming on tonight. God bless you for coming on. God bless you, Kingdom family. Good to see you coming on tonight, Tina. Who's all coming on? Let me see. It's a little slower on my computer. I hope you all can hear me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, everybody. Trying to see who's coming on. Can you all hear me? All coming on. Let me there see. It's go. a little slower on my computer. I hope you all There you go. You can all hear me. Thank you, Jesus. We got a little mess up on the giving there, folks. So if you can bear with me, I'm going that. Hallelujah. Are you blessed tonight? If you're blessed, please put up on the screen, I'm blessed. Please put up on the screen, I am blessed. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Sorry, I'm just trying to get situated. There you go. Brother Randy's on. Deborah's on. Villian's on. God bless you. Darlene's on. Gay's on. Sean, great to see you all coming on tonight. God bless you. Yes, Gay says, I am blessed. Yes, Don says, I'm blessed. Just to put that up on the screen, folks, tonight that you're blessed and uh, and that the blessing and the favor of God's on your life. Brother Randy says, I'm blessed. Peggy Sue, amen. Great to see you all coming on. Boy, do I miss seeing you all live. I can't wait to get back out of this quarantine. Uh, I'm believing God it's going to be soon. Oh, Thomas, wonderful here. We are blessed. Uh, I don't know what mine wrote there. I, I am blessed six. Is that what that is? <laughs> well, please share this, folks. Tonight it's going to be an awesome session. We're going to be teaching on the power of the seed, and I, it's going to be a great, great teaching tonight. I know you're going to enjoy it. Uh, we're blessed to have you on tonight with us as we teach the Word of God to get your Bibles out. Oh, there's Diane. God bless you, Diane. Great to see you on tonight. And Esperanza, great to see you on too. Praise God. Glad to hear that, Diane. Uh, hi, Pastor. I am blessed. I'm glad you're blessed. We're not letting anything get us down these days because we have faith in Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Uh, Yogita, God bless you. I am blessed. I'm glad to hear that and sing with Terry and Julia. Oh, I'm just waiting some more folks to come on. But get your Bibles tonight, family. It's going to be a good teaching tonight. I know you're going to be learn some things. You're going to know some of these things, but it's good to reiterate it into our lives. I know I love to do that all the time. I love to, I love to just review the Word of God in my spirit because it's the Word of God that brings your faith alive. Hallelujah. There's Pastor. Is that Pastor Robert? He's on. Praise God. And Joe, God bless you. You're on. Great to see everybody. I'm so blessed that you're on tonight. Gay. You and Brent, we love you and bless you. Praise God. Family, I can't wait to get out of this quarantine. I tell you what, we have uh, we just tested again today. I, I'm the most COVID-free, and my children are the most COVID-free people, I think, in Ontario. Uh, man, every time we've been negative, praise God for that. And uh, I'm looking forward to all of these lockdowns and stuff ending. And I'm telling you right now, some things are starting to shift. God is moving in the earth. God is moving on our behalf. And as we said, we believe we're leading into the tribulation period. This may not be that exact time, but we know we're living in the last of the last days. But God, may God give us a window of opportunity uh, to expand the kingdom and preach the gospel into people's hearts before the return of Jesus. Amen. Lorna, God bless you. I was praying for Mama, Lauren, Lorna, the other day. Send my love to Miss Jean. Uh, we love her, and I've been. I was praying for her. God bless you too, Julia. As you're coming on, Sister Julia. God bless you, Oris. Uh, but as I was saying, some things are shifting. I'm not going to teach on COVID tonight, but some things are shifting without a doubt. 
now that now that what we prophesied way back in February of last, last not this year, but last year, um, we told you it came out of a lab. People said it came out of market. Well, now they're saying it came out of a lab. And now you see the pinpointing on it on the nation of China. And you're going to see a shift now in the media and everything else because they receive a lot of money from this nation. And you're going to see the Hollywood shifting and the media shifting and even politicians shifting uh, because they make so much money and they don't want to have the blame go there. I get it. They want to, they, you know, there's there's corruption in all of what's going on, folks, as we know. But I'm believing God a big shift's coming and we're starting to see it already. Praise God. Amen. God is good. So these are good times and I'm expecting. Uh, but let's get into the word of God. I know I can't be with you in person, but I can be with you right now on this video. And if you have your Bible, go to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, as we teach tonight on the power of the seed. The power of the seed. Somebody asked me, when's a good time to sow? Every time's a good time to sow. We're not just talking financially tonight. We're talking every aspect of our lives. Understanding the power of the seed through the scriptures so that we can always remain in the favor of God and have the blessing of the Lord flowing rich within our lives. Hallelujah. Did you know that God wants you blessed? I hope you do. God wants you blessed. God wants you prosperous. God wants you strong. He wants you healthy. He wants you to have favor. He wants you to have influence. That doesn't mean we're not going to go through hard times and troublesome times. But God's ultimate desire is that you would be, be blessed uh, for your life. You know, tonight as we talk about the seed, the power of the seed, and getting that revelation back into our spirit, especially during these times of COVID, getting, getting our faith wrapped around the idea that everything that we know of comes from a seed and nothing happens without a seed. Praise God. You know, I want you to get this in your spirit also right at the beginning of this teaching. Uh, this Your seed, our seed, whatever we sow, for whatever reason, our seed is a photograph of our faith. Our seed is, is a snapshot of where our faith is at. And our ability to show shows us where our faith is at. And, uh, and that's an important thought tonight. I want to I get that into your spirit right away. And we're going to come back to that as I even give you some personal testimony tonight on the power of the seed. So let me say that again. Your seed, my seed, our seed is a photograph of our faith or where our faith is at. And we have to understand that all of the blessing of God on our lives came as a result of a seed. You see, God wanted a family, so he had to sow. So what did he sow? He sowed his firstborn son, his only begotten son, Jesus. Jesus was the father's seed sown on the cross so that God would bring many sons and daughters unto righteousness into the kingdom of God. And so we see, we see the faith of the father in a photograph picture in Jesus as Jesus is the seed of the Father sown for you and I to become the sons and daughters of the Most High God. What a seed that was, amen? You know, the Bible teaches us that Jesus was a seed. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15 says, He's the seed of the woman. Praise God. You know, Gen uh, uh, God told Abraham that Abraham's seed shall bless all the earth. That's, of course, that's being Jesus. Jesus is the seed of Abraham. And he is the seed of the Father, praise God. The greatest seed that was ever sown in the earth was the Lamb of God, was Jesus our Savior. Can somebody give him praise tonight? Can you put up on the screen, Jesus, we, we praise you, Lord Jesus. Or maybe you'll put up on the screen, Jesus is the greatest seed that has ever been sown on the earth. And what a harvest that has brought, uh, praise God, to the kingdom of God. And I want you to understand something tonight, family. Everything that God has made, both spiritually and physically, operates by the law of the seed and the law of the harvest. Everything. Everything that God has created operates by the law of the seed and the law of the harvest. And I tell you what, there's been a lot of 
uh, retraction in the idea of sowing in this hour because of COVID-19. But God began to deal with me saying, I want you to tell my people, I want them to sow so much, you know, so many things, so many things that are seeds. I want them to sow it in this hour because there is never a time in God that you cannot reap a harvest. Let me say that again. There's never a time in God that you cannot reap a harvest. In the natural, it can be affected by drought. It can be affected by, uh, by, the, by the field. It can be affected by weather. It can be affected by crisis like, like many people are going through now. But remember this. There's no crisis in God. God is never in trouble. The kingdom of God is never in trouble. It's never in crisis. And the child of God, which you and I are, we should never be in crisis. We should always be in Christ. Hallelujah. And, uh, and because the kingdom is never in crisis and the kingdom of God is never in lack, praise God, there's never a bad time to sow the seeds that God has given us in our lives and live by the law of the seed and the law of the harvest. I'm excited right now. I'll tell you what, now, I, me getting this few days rest has been good for me because I've been able to hear the voice of God very clearly. Sometimes when you're busy, all of us, sometimes when you're busy and you're rushed and you're stressed and you're overwhelmed and you're wore out, man, I tell you, you find it difficult to hear the voice of God. But when we rest and spend some time with the Lord, I tell you what, you, you'll hear the voice of God powerfully. And I'm excited right now because I'm expecting before the return of Jesus and in these days for God to give his people tremendous harvested, harvests from the law of the seed. Can somebody give God praise? And I want you to put up on the screen right now, by faith, I want you to get that by faith. Just say, I'm going to sow and I'm going to reap greatly in this hour. Say, I'm going to sow and I'm going to reap greatly. You will. That's that's your faith. That's your confession of faith. Hallelujah. And again, I, I, I don't want you, because so many times when people think about sowing instantaneously, they go to money. Money is a part of it, but it's not all of it, because there's many different seeds, and that's what we're about to learn. You know, the entire earth, as I said a second ago, runs on the law of the harvest. Why? God created that as we go into the scriptures here, and we go to Genesis chapter 1, Verse 24, and God said, let the earth bring forth the living creatures. This is after he created the whales and all the all of the fowl of the air and all of the beasts of the field. He says, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creepy things, and the beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind and the cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after its kind. And God saw that it was good. That's God had put the power of the law of seed into everything that he has created. And the seed that God has made concerning anything has the power and the resources within the seed to bring a harvest or to bring reproduction or to bring expansion. Hallelujah. And so... We see right off the bat, God created the earth to have a time of seed, the law of seed. We also see it in Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. And if you have your Bible, let's go there. Genesis 8, 22. And many of you know this scripture, but the Bible says this. The Bible says, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest. Now get that in your spirit tonight. Nothing happens without a seed. Your life is blessed because of the seeds that you've sown. Wherever there's lack in our lives, it's because of the lack of seed that has been sown. And anything that has the ability to reproduce has seed within it or operates by the law of the seed. Praise God. So everything that reproduces after its kind has seed within it. And it'll always reproduce after the way God intended it. You never see a watermelon uh, creating an apple tree or an apple tree making a banana tree. You don't see, you, you don't see an elephant 
reproducing a zebra. Everything comes after its own kind or after the seed by which God had created it. That's in the natural. Now in the spirit, God is able to supersede that because he's God. He's supernatural. Hallelujah. There's things that God would tell you to sow in the natural that you will reap spiritual blessing or you'll reap something from it that's not necessarily connected to its own kind. I'm going to share that in a second. But for the most part, we when we sow, we reap after our own kind. And the seed has the power to reproduce after its own kind. That's the law God created. Now, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, I wish it was always hot. Some of you love that cold weather. I tell you, you need deliverance if you love cold weather. I love hot weather. And summer and winter and day and night, it shall not cease. So the law of the seed and the law of the harvest shall not cease. So again, everything in our lives, when we desire expansion or we desire multiplication or we desire increase, it's going to require a seed that is to be sown. Even God followed his own law. You know, God had to follow his own law when he gave his only begotten son as the greatest seed ever sown in order to reap sons and daughters unto righteousness and into the kingdom and have a family. God followed his own law there and he sowed his son, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I've seen where some folks have sown financially and reaped something else, but it's because they had sown into the kingdom and God had blessed them with the desires of their hearts. Now, that would be a supernatural seed from God. But even God followed his own principles concerning the law of harvest. Hallelujah. A farmer sows to reap a harvest, sows seed. A, a man will sow seed into a woman to reap a child. Praise God. And, uh, and so that's the natural courses of seed. And that means that we as believers have to really gravitate to that idea again that wrap our faith around that idea of that how God has made things for us to multiply. You know, it's interesting because unbelievers know this, especially people who are looking to expand their, their financial portfolio. They understand that if they just take what they have and they hide it under a mattress, it will never expand. But if they take that, and they sow that into an investment or sow that into a business or, or sow that into a stock or something or sow that into a precious metal, they then will reap the benefits of releasing that finance into something that will help it expand. And so instead of hiding it under mattress, which will never multiply, most it will end up dwindling or remaining the same. It's the same idea as the believer. We have to understand that's how God made things. And uh, things just don't happen just to happen. Things happen because somebody made a decision to receive or to make it happen. Can I get an amen on that? Churches grow because people sowed for that church to grow. People grow in the kingdom because they have done things to help them grow. Relationships grow because we sow into the relationship. Families grow because of, 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 the, of the idea of sowing and reaping and reaping a harvest from that. Hallelujah. And, uh, and we have to gra grasp hold of the fact that unless we sow, we will never reap. And, and, and our faith must sow constantly to remain active and for it to bring forth the fruitfulness of why God gave us the, the, the precious uh, precious uh, gift of faith and uh, and why God connected us to sowing and reaping with faith. Can I get an amen on that? So, so the seed time harvest is essential. And I want to say this by the Holy Ghost in a prophetic way right now. Now is not the time to hold back on sowing and reaping. Now is the time, the Lord says, for the body of Christ to sow, and we, we should be sowing because every day in Christ is an opportunity to sow and reap a harvest. Can you give the Lord an amen on that? Now is the time we ought to be sowing more than ever, I believe, and the Holy Ghost told me that great increase is coming to many, many believers. Great increase is coming to many believers. 
as they sow by faith the seeds that God has given unto them. Hallelujah. And that seed will reproduce after its own kind. And we have to know that, believe that, and have confidence in that. Now, when the farmer goes out and sows cabbage seed, he doesn't expect or she doesn't expect to reap carrots. They expect to reap cabbage. Uh, when You know, when a male, and when this is a little bit of a joke, but when a man and a woman come together to have a child, when that man sows the seed, he's not expecting to get to get an an, some type of animal. He's expecting to get a child after his own image or after the image of the mother. Praise God, but a human being. You understand what I'm saying? So we have to begin to expect that the seeds that God gave us shall reproduce after their own kind. And as we sow them by faith, we shall increase and have more abundance within our lives. And this is God's desire. So I want to say it again, prophetically, the Lord is encouraging his people to sow in this hour to reap great harvests in their lives. Now, a seed, I want you to get break this down. A seed given can bring us into what we have been promised according in the word of God. A seed given can help us bring us into what we have been promised by God. Hallelujah. And we have to trust the word of the Lord, of what the promises of God are. But a seed given, let me repeat that again. A seed given can help bring us into the fulfillment of the promises of God. Hallelujah. Let me let me explain that to you. You remember the woman of Zarephath, when the, when the man of God, Elijah, he had no food. And God said, I have commanded a widow to take care of thee, get thee up and go. And the Bible says when, when Elijah came to the outside of the gate of the city, he met this woman. And uh, he, he, uh, he asked the woman, really quick and very, really simplistic in this. He asked the woman, he said, he said uh, go bake me a cake and uh, for me and then bake one for your son and yourself. She said, all I have is a little bit of meal, man of God. I was going to bake a cake for me and my son today. And then we were going to die. He said, no, 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 woman, go bake me a cake first and then bake one for your son. And, and, and the barrel of meal will never run out. Why? Because the promise of God was that God was going to use a widow woman to take care of the man of God during famine which means that he was going to be taken care of and she was going to be taken care of. So her seed sowing into the man of God helped bring the promise of God to fulfillment in both of their lives. And of course, the barrel of meal did not run out and the man of God and, and that woman and her son had more than enough. So her seed uh, brought her into her promise from the Lord. Now she had to have faith on the word of what Elijah said, and she did. She brought that seed, and uh, and she obeyed because every act of obedience is an act of faith. So as she brought the seed to the man of God, she believed what he had said, which was by the word of the Lord. And not only did she, I thought about this today. Not only did she have faith to bring the seed to fulfill the promise. Hallelujah. But she had to have faith the next morning to go back to the barrel that was empty and scoop out that flour and take out that oil and make those cakes again. She could have woke up the next morning and said, well, there's nothing in that barrel. But she went back to the barrel by faith and in the barrel was everything they needed to sustain three people for the entire famine. And I believe God blessed her even beyond that and continually. That's God. So a seed can bring us into the fulfillment of promise. That's the same with Jesus, the greatest seed ever sown. Hit the seed of the Father brought the fulfillment of the promises of the Father, and we are the beneficiaries of the seed and the promises of the Father in Christ Jesus. Can somebody give the Lord a big praise? Hallelujah. 
So I want to encourage you, get that in your spirit right away. N nothing in my life will multiply until I'm willing to sow seed. And there will be no harvest in my life unless a seed has been sown. So the abundance and the prosperity and the success and the increase and the expansion of my life is contingent on the law of sowing and the law of harvest or the law of reaping. And so I'm going to grab a hold of that by faith like that Zarephath woman, and I will be blessed and I will increase. KWC family, we will be blessed and we will increase. All of our partners, all of our friends, all of, our, all of, all of those who help us on a regular basis, we shall be blessed and we will increase. Hallelujah. So a seed given can bring us into the promise. Now I'm going to give you a scripture on this real quick. If you have your Bible... Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter, and I have proven this, and many of you, I know of you for years, you've proven this too. And I love that, that old statement. I love to say it over again. A man or a woman with an experience is never at the mercy of a man or a woman with an argument. I have people tell me all that sowing and reaping stuff that you preach before, people preach it. Oh, that don't work. I don't believe that stuff. Well, it doesn't matter if they believe it or not. It's true. It's the word of God. But a man or woman with experience is never at the mercy of a man or woman with an argument. If you've proven it, your faith is already electrified in that revelation. Somebody say, praise God. And the Bible says this, and here it is. In, uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 9 says, It is written, He has dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remains forever. Now he that ministers seed to the who? To the sower. God gives us the seed. What amazing God we serve. He gives us the seed to sow so that as we sow the seed, we shall reap a greater level of abundance in our lives. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. He's so good, isn't he? I tell you, I don't know why anybody wouldn't serve the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know why anybody wouldn't want to live in the kingdom of God. God is faithful. And the Bible says, Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and to multiply your seed sowing. So when I told you this, that a seed can bring us into something that has been promised, this is what the word of God is saying. God said, I'm giving you the seed. As you sow the seed, you shall reap abundance and you shall reap bread and food and you will multiply the seed that you have sown. So as we sow, we reap a harvest. We even also increase in seed that we can sow so that we can reap even more. It's the same thing with the financier or the person who has money. Rather than put it under the mattress or put it on a shelf or put it in the safe. Uh, so I know some people, they hide money all over their house and then they can't find it. Is anybody like, I hope that's not you. But it, if it's you, I, I want to come clean your house. Praise God. But you see, if you store it like that, it'll never multiply. But again, if you take seed and you sow it into an investment and the investment grows, not only have you multiplied, but you've also multiplied the capacity or the amount of seed you have, and you've also multiplied the capacity of your future. Praise God. Hallelujah. You've also multiplied the capacity of your future. Some folks say to me, how do you understand the Bible so much? Or how do you have so much revelation in the Bible? Well, it's pretty simple. The Bible, the Word of God is a seed. Jesus told us this in Luke chapter 8, 11. The Word of God, he said, the, the parable is the Word is the seed. And as I receive the Word or a revelation of the Word, rather than hoard it, rather than store it, rather than shelve it, rather than save, save, save it, I release it. And as I release it, that seed goes out. It brings a harvest, and God gives me more seed in my life, which is greater understanding, more revelation, more knowledge of the Word. So I multiply, but also the powerful thing about the Word as it's released, others multiply as a result of us releasing the Word. You have to give to receive, folks. I want you to put that down in your spirit. Maybe put that up on the screen. You have to give to receive. You have to give to receive. 
Life is not a culmination of chance. It's a culmination of decision. And giving requires a decision on our behalf. Somebody said to me not too long ago, I don't have too many friends. How can I have more friends? I said, well, then you've got to be friendly. The Bible says, he that is friendly has many friends. So as you sow the seed of love and as you sow relationship and, and kindness and goodness and as you sow into other people's lives, ha, ah, praise God, you shall reap access to those people's lives and you shall reap friendship. You don't have friends is because, listen, I'm going to be real with you. Somebody may be mad at me about this, but if you don't have any friends, it's because you haven't sown into somebody's life for friendship. And that's the, and again, that's the word of God. The word of God is true. Somebody said to me years ago, how'd you get co co con uh, connected to men of God like Brother Shambach and other great men of God? Well, it's because I sowed into their lives. I I, I sowed relationship, I sowed support and care into their lives. And that gave me access. And that access multiplied my life in that relationship. I, I increased in those relationships because they taught me things that I could have never learned. And I learned things so quickly at a young age. So the law of sowing and reaping is a spiritual law that we have to wrap our faith around. And God said it. Now he that ministers seed to the sower minister bread for your food and multiplied your seed sown and increased the fruits of your righteousness. I've had people tell me in church life, oh, I don't have any seed to sow. Well, that would be a lie because God ministers seed to, to well, number one is you, you do have seed to sow, but you may not have the seed that you think that you need to sow, but you do have something to sow. But those who have an abundance to sow is because they're a sower. God gives to a sower, but everyone has something they can give to somebody. Everyone has something to give. To Even that Zarephath woman only had, think about it. She only had enough food for one more day of her life, but it was a seed. If she had eat, eaten that seed, she would have died. But because she sowed that seed, she released the promise of God in her life. So I want to encourage you, don't say that you don't have anything to sow. You do have things to sow. I'll never forget this. i tell you what, this woman touched me, and I pray, I hope she's watching me. But i never forget this. This is a family going through a financial crisis in their life. Husband and dad is sick, he can't work, and they had absolutely no money to pay their bills and no money to pay their mortgage, and they were, they were maxed out in every way, and they were going to lose everything. I remember she, she, she was... Uh, she was really going through it, and I was praying with her, and we were trying to help the family too. But I never forget this. One Sunday morning, they they had chickens, and they raised a, a chickens, and they had fresh eggs. And on this, she brought, I think it was two dozen of fresh eggs from the from the chickens that morning. She brought them to church. And she brought them all the way down in church and laid them on the altar. And she prayed over those, over those. And I, I'll tell you what happened. God began to bless that family. Things turned around for that family because they sowed that seed that to some was hilarious. Some it was insignificant. But to this precious woman is what she had. And God blessed her. Can somebody give God praise? I'll never forget this. And God blessed that woman of God for her faith. And the Bible says he multiplies your seed so on and increase the fruits of your righteousness. And listen, your being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes us through thanksgiving. Now here Paul's talking about sowing finance into the work of God. And here is God he, sowing things into the ministry. And uh, he's saying that as you sow, you shall go into bountifulness. Why? Because Genesis chapter 1 tells us about the law of, of the seed and of, the, of, of, of reproduction and increase. And, and, did run, and, and Genesis chapter 8 says, uh, while the earth remains seed time and harvest. So if we want to come into bountifulness in our lives, in any aspect of our lives, it's going to require for us to sow, to reap, that blessing, because God does not violate his laws. 
and God honors his word. Can you give the Lord a big praise? Amen. The kingdom also operates, family, the spiritual kingdom also operates in the power of the seed and the law of the harvest. The kingdom does. And if you have your Bible, go to Galatians chapter 6. So I want to stir your faith up tonight. I want to stir your faith up tonight. Brother Shambach used to say, let's stir up our faith. Uh, 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 my pastor down in, in Houston, Texas, uh, Pastor John Osteen, used to say, we're going to stretch your faith by the word of God tonight. I want to encourage you. Start sowing in your life like never before. There's a season of a, I, listen, some people think I'm crazy, but I know I heard from God. There's a season of supernatural harvest coming on the body of Christ. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. There's a season of abundance coming to the body of Christ, especially those who've endured. Let me encourage you. Those who've stood up during COVID-19, those who haven't run in fear, those who have stood by faith, those who had faced the adversary, those who kept preaching the word and and keep pressing forward and kept supporting the work of God and kept showing up for God. There is an open heaven that as we sow in this hour, there will be a supernatural harvest come in Jesus' mighty name, just like that Zarephath woman. And uh, praise God, I want, you to, I want you to receive that into your spirit tonight in the name of Jesus. Galatians 6, 7, spiritually now, spiritually. Be not deceived. Many of you know the scripture too. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. Why? Why isn't God mocked? Because God made it that way. God, God can't be mocked because he created the system. God cannot be mocked because he knows that what he instituted will work. It can also work adversely too, ad, uh, advers uh, adversarially in our lives too. We sow unto unrighteousness, we will reap unrighteousness. If we sow to the wind, we'll reap the whirlwind. If we sow to, to profanity, uh, to vanity, uh, profanity, we'll reap, the Bible says, vanity. And so, uh, you know, it's very clear scripture. That's adversely, uh, uh, adversarially, but here we go. The Bible says, be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh of the flesh will reap corruption. Uh, but he that soweth of to the Spirit shall of the Spirit, capital S, both of them, Holy Spirit, reap life everlasting. So as we sow our lives into the kingdom, as we sow our faith in the word of God, as, as we sow our faith that God give us the seed of faith that God gave us, as we sow that into the power of the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, we shall reap life. But as we sow anything, that God has said in his word, we shall reap from it. And uh, let's not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap a harvest if we faint not, so we don't lose hope, we don't lose faith. In this hour of COVID-19 lockdowns and all of this control manipulation, we can't lose faith, folks, and we can't, we can't get faint or get weary. We're about to receive the greatest increase in our lives, and when the coming of the Lord comes, how great shall our harvest be in the mighty name of Jesus. So you can reap, you will reap as you obey the word of God by faith and you sow. Let me let me give you this testimony. You know, I said, I said earlier, God God sometimes calls on you. Have, have you ever had it? Maybe you'll, some of you will put that on the screen. Have you ever had it where God told you to sow something? and your heart was pounding, and you were you were nervous. Maybe you were even doing it uh, uh, grudgingly, and you were struggling with it. How many of you ever that, that? That's happened to me. You know, years ago, uh, one of the greatest things in my life was to be a father, a daddy. And when I didn't have children, my heart was broken. It was a weight that I carried every day of my life. So I understand people who are believing for child, and if you are, I have the faith for it. But uh, I'll never forget that uh, I was in a service one day and the man of God got up and he said, I'm going over to uh, I'm going over to South Africa to preach the gospel, to win people to Christ. And he said, he said, and I need help. And will you help me? 
And I'll tell you what, I didn't have much money back then. I had just left the corporate world. I had sown everything I got into the ministry. And I had a little bit of money in the bank. And I never forget, the Lord told me, he gave me a number to sow a seed, a financial seed. He said, I want you to sow this amount into this man so he can go preach the gospel. And I said, oh, God. I said, I don't know. I can't do that. That's a lot. And the Lord said, you, you want a child, don't you? And I said, Lord, you know it. I want to be a daddy. That's what I want. And the Lord said to me, he said, if you sow a, this seed so that this man of God can go get me more children in South Africa, I will, praise God, he said, I will bless you with children. And I said, man, I'll tell you what, I've never heard this before. Sowing a seed for a child. Well, that made sense to me. If I'm sowing a seed, you know, then it started to click in. It makes sense to me. If I'm sowing this seed for God to reap children, then God will bring that seed to a harvest for me to have children. And I never forget, I went up there and I sowed that seed and I put it in that, and I said, and I said, Lord, thank you for speaking to me. I believe your word. And I sowed that seed. And I never forget when I sowed that seed. It was at a conference down in Watertown, New York, at one of my friend's churches. And I tell you, I tell you, it it it, it, it was a powerful experience for me. Because in this, real quick, short folks, Jesus, I have stood in the presence of Jesus. He has spoke to me audibly. And he spoke to me audibly on the mountain of Hamilton when I was praying over the city and asked me what I wanted. And I fell to my knees and out of my spirit said, I want to be a daddy. I wept before him. I said, I just want to be a daddy. That's all I want. And God said, I'm going to answer that prayer. And sure enough, I have three beautiful children now. Because of the power of a seed. Because God spoke to me and said, sow the seed. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Now, God is able even to do things. I've seen people sow financial seeds. Now, I'm not just talking about money tonight, but financial seeds to reap a spouse. Because God is able to make anything happen. God's able to create anything from something. The, the law of seed time harvest, for sure, the seed will reproduce after its own kind. But God is a supernatural God. Can somebody say amen to that? God is a supernatural God. I saw a woman one time sow her time into the church. She sowed her time into the church, laboring in the house of God for the salvation of her children. And she reaped a harvest from that. And God blessed her for her serving. Praise God. God's a good God. He, she sowed hallelujah, into taking care of God's children and God supernaturally took care of her children. She reaped after her seed and God made a supernatural seed happen for her. She sowed time and God reaped and she reaped the salvation of her children. Oh, he's a supernatural God, isn't he? Praise God. Now, uh, we know that the word of God is seed, as I said earlier. So the kingdom operates by the same principle. The spirit realm operates by the same principle. And we have to know that and believe that. But more importantly, faith is not just an idea. Faith is not just a thought. Faith is not just a song. Faith is an action. The Bible says, according to James... Faith without works is dead. So one of the ways that we can release our faith, one of the great ways we can release our faith is by the law of sowing and the law of reaping, just like Jesus did, just like Jesus taught us. Remember remember the supernatural harvest Jesus gave when, when they had no food to feed the, the multitude, but a young little boy obeyed the Lord and gave of his fish and of his bread. And the Lord multiplied it, that seed, and praise God, everybody was fed, and they picked up baskets and baskets of fish and bread pieces left over. And I guess, guess who reaped from that? The little boy probably reaped from that too. His family probably had more than what the little boy was about to bring home 
to his family. That's the power of the, of the law of sowing and reaping. And let's get our faith on that very quickly, family. Praise God. Amen. Now, here, here's the word of God, too, and I'm going to show you in Scripture. So we can sow. We can sow in our lives. Uh, we can sow for relationship. We can sow for ministry. We can sow for the salvation of our children. Praise God. Uh, I'll tell you what, when, when I've had people come to me and say, I need a job. I, I need to work, and I, and I have no, no work. And I tell them every time. You want you want an employment opportunity to open up for you right away? You say, yeah, yeah, Pastor, I do. I said, then come and volunteer your time at the church. Sow your time to God and sow your gift and your talents and your abilities to God's work. And what you make available for God's house, God will make available for your house. And I'll tell you what, I've never not seen a person who has sown their talents and their time and their abilities into the house of God, not reap a job. Every single one of them. Every single one of them. And I know some of you, up, uh, I've seen some of you on tonight, and I don't want to mention your name if, unless you want to mention it yourself, but there's some of you on tonight that I have spoken that word to, that, to you directly, and you did it, and some of you are still reaping the harvest of that seed that you sowed many years ago in the same place that you're working today as you got back then. Because you obeyed the word of God and you understood the power and the law of sowing and the law of reaping. Hallelujah. Works in relationship, family. If you want, hey, how many of you, how many of you ladies, how many of you ladies want more attention, more love from your husband? Then you gotta sow into him. You gotta sow love. You gotta sow kindness. You gotta sow you gotta serve him. I know we don't want to hear that in this hour in this goofy society that's so messed up. But you got to serve that man. You serve him. You love him. You care for him. And you meet you meet his needs. And I guarantee you, his heart will turn towards you. You want that wife to do the same for you? Do it. Serve him. Praise God. Ser serve her. Bless her. Love her. Can I get an amen from all the ladies? A sow into her. You get what you sow, the Bible says, and you shall reap from the law of the harvest and the law of the seed. Praise God. Now, this is, God told us this also in, in Malachi. He told them this in the giving. Now, again, what, what did I say at the beginning of this, of this session? Your seed is a photograph or a picture of your faith. We can learn where you're at in your faith by the measure of your seed or where your seed is at. And that, and that, that is the truth. And so Malachi chapter 3, God told us the same thing again, always. God always sends promise. If you sow, you shall reap. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. Whatever you sow, you, you, shall, you shall reap from that. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 6. He knows how God is always trying to encourage us to sow and to give because he can't be mocked. He created this system. He's trying to teach us how to operate in the system and how to be blessed spiritually and naturally. And again, he does it again. He gives promises. He says, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now here and say, the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessing that there's not room enough for you to receive it. That's the tithe. That's the tithe. I know many people try to teach the tithe isn't, isn't for today, but that's not what the Bible teaches, folks. Uh, the Bible is very clear on the importance of the tenth. Sowing the first portion so that the rest will be blessed and the harvest shall come. And again, the seed is a picture of our faith. And so uh, you can tell where people's faith at on, on this revelation of tithing and giving to the work of the Lord, without a doubt. We don't beat people up. We don't try to manipulate people to give and do that kind of stuff in the house of God. Now I'm talking about uh, financially and in sowing their time, talents, and giftings. We don't try to manipulate people. We should never try to uh, threaten people. We should never take advantage of people. We should never abuse people in the house of God. Can I get an amen on that? We should encourage people, and we should teach them the word of God, and we should help build their faith up because that's really where the issue is. When we don't obey the word of God, it's one of two things. We're ignorant to the word of God or we fully haven't grasped the, that word and that revelation by faith yet. 
So it's important that we teach the word so we uh, remove ignorance. And it's important that we build their faith up where they can stand and obey the word of God by faith. And so I want to encourage you, if you struggle in this area, get, the, get encouraged in your faith. God made a promise to you that if you will sow into the work of the ministry, as, as 2 Corinthians 9 tells us, as Malachi chapter 3 tells us, praise God, as Jesus said, given it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give in your bosom, as those promises are real. As you begin to operate in this, you will see God bless you. And God, most importantly, God will not fail his word. Can somebody put that up on the screen? God will not fail in his word. If he said it, he will do it. If he made it, it will work. Whatever you create it, it will happen. That's the God that we serve. And COVID-19 and all of the crazy decisions of politicians have no bearing on the promises of God and they never override the system that God created and they never can stop the blessing of God flowing into the man or woman of God who operates by faith in the law of seed time and harvest. The Zarephath woman, she overrode it, praise God. Hannah, didn't she override it when she wanted a child? And she said, Lord, if you bless me with a child, I'll give him back to you. And God opened that precious woman's womb. And she had a child. His name was Samuel. And she sowed that child, praise God, into the work of God. And God blessed her with even more. That's the God I serve. So let's never operate in the realm of fear. And it tries to get us. It tries to come on all of us. It tries to attack us. Never operate in the fear realm even in the time of crisis. We operate in the faith realm. We approach everything by faith. Let me share another testimony. The Lord reminded me of this, and I shared this with somebody the other day. This is a personal testimony of mine. I needed a breakthrough in my life at, at one time. I had just moved back from Florida to Canada, and uh, why I left sunny Florida, I don't know why. I know why God wanted me to be up here to minister. But I just left a high paying job in Florida to come to Canada. I came by faith. And when I came to Canada, I needed a breakthrough. I couldn't find a place of employment. I had applied everywhere I knew possible. I applied I applied to jobs I thought I'd get and they said, you're overqualified or you're underqualified in some of them. Man, did I ever need a breakthrough in my life. I was in church one day and I was praying. And I, and I was calling on God, Lord, I, I came by faith and I need a breakthrough. I need a job, Lord. I'm wanting to work. I'm willing to work, but I need an open door. And I never forget in that service, the Lord said to me, I had some things saved up, uh, you know, some, some money saved up to get an apartment. Uh, I was living with a friend then and get an apartment and, and to get furniture and, and to buy a car in Canada and just get my life going. And the Lord said to me, he said, you've, you've been faithful to me. He said, but I want you tonight to go through everything you have. And I want you to tie, I want you to give 10% of everything that you have. And I, I don't know about you. Have you ever been there? Again, a lump came in my throat. My heart started to pound. I said, God, I can't do that. I, I, that's a major portion of money that I'm going to need. I don't even have a job yet. And God said, I want you to do this for me. Will you do it? And I've got to be honest with you, folks. I came kicking and screaming. I went to the bank. I went into some investments. I pulled out money. I brought and I got just over 10% of everything. I, it, was a big, it was a big lump of money for what I had back then again. And I never forget I went down to the altar of that church and the Lord told me to sow it and I sowed it. Not knowing that the church and the ministry team was believing God for a financial breakthrough. They needed a breakthrough. The church was in going through financial difficulties and they needed a breakthrough. And this brought the breakthrough for them. And I sowed it. And when I went back to my, to my pew chair, I started crying. Have you ever done that? I said, oh God, this is hard. This is hard, Lord, but I'm trusting you. I believe you. Here's what the Lord said to me. He said, son, do you know that 
some things are perennials and some things are annuals. And I knew it. You know what that is. Some A tree is, is, is a perennial, isn't it? It comes up every year. Annuals are only a flower that comes once a year. It dies. You have to plant a new one every year. But so, a, a, a tulip will come up constantly. That bulb will always bring the same tulip up every year. A tree will always constantly go into into a moment of hibernation, but it'll come alive again and bring fruitfulness. And the Lord said to me, here's what he said to me. He said, that seed of obedience that you sowed, son, because he saw the need of the church. I didn't see it. God saw it. And I sowed it. And i never forget, God said to me, son, that was not a one-time harvest. That seed, I knew it was tough for you. I knew it required obedience. I knew it required your faith. And I knew it was challenging. I want you to know that's a, that you didn't just plant a for a one-time harvest. He said, you will reap off of that seed for the rest of your life, son. That will be a tree of abundance that whenever you need something, you will always have it because of that one seed. And I want to encourage you. There's times in our lives where we will sow whatever it is. And, uh, and again, it, it's not always finances, but many times God does require us to sow finance because, because money is a really indication of where our heart is. Uh, you know, uh, where, where, uh, where your treasure is, there your heart is also, the Bible says. And God said to me, you will always reap from that tree. And I can confidently say, God has never failed me on that word that he told me. And that, folks, is going back now. Can you imagine this? That's going back to 1994. It's going back to almost 30 years now. And when I went through the hardest time of my life, and everything was taken from me, I was never in lack. Me and my children have been blessed. And many, God has used many of you to be a blessing to us. And I am so eternally grateful to many of you who have been so kind to us. See, what we have to understand, God uses people to bless us. God will always use people to bless us. Praise God. And, uh, and as we sow, God will bring good people into your life. Favor, opportunities, open doors. But people will be connected to it. Because that's the God that we serve. He always finds a way. Praise God. God ain't writing you a check in heaven, is he? he, give it, he God, God isn't mailing checks from heaven. I wish he would. Amen. Wouldn't you like that? Wouldn't you like to go to your mailbox today, open up and say, it says, Glo the bank of glory from heaven itself, $10 million. It would be great for that to happen. No, God uses people to bless people. And then God blesses the people he used to bless that person. Because that's how God wants to get people to be, to increase and to be blessed in their life. And I'll tell you, that seed has, has brought a harvest. Some of you have sown those types of seeds in your life. Some of you have given those types of seed. I remember a precious woman who cared for a dying a, a dying elderly lady in the church. She cared for that dying elderly lady for months. And God said to her, I'm going to touch your whole family and your son who's a drug addict. I'm going to set him free from drugs and addiction because you serve this woman. I'm going to give you the desire of your heart. So the seed of time helped bring redemption to her child because she sowed Love into a precious woman. That's the power of the law of the seed. Can somebody give God a big praise? Now, I'm almost done for the... I'm going to be done here soon. And I'm going a little bit over, but uh, I can't... Look at the time already. Wow, we are flying tonight. I want to give you a couple more principles before I close. No seed, no harvest. That's obvious. No seed, no har harvest. Our lives are based on the power of the seed and the things that we have sown. Everything you have in your life today is everything you have sown for yesterday. Everything you sowed for yesterday, you're reaping today. And, and you will reap in your future. And so, so set realize this. Your future is continued on your seed. And everything you have today is based upon what you believed for yesterday. What you sowed for yesterday. Now, you can change your life. I want you to get this in your spirit. There's another principle. You can change your life through the power of the seed today. You can change your life through the power of the seed today. Can I get an amen on that? Let me say that again. You can change your life 
by the power of the seed in your life today. Praise God. Amen. You can change your life today. When you sow your seed, you reschedule the events of your future. Let me say that again. When you sow your seed, you will reschedule and change the events of your future. Oh, bless God for that. Come on, church. Same for us as Kingdom Worship Center. As we sow as a church into our nation and our community, we will change the events of our church and reschedule the events of our church in the future. I pray you share this with some folks today because no matter what's going on with COVID-19, we can change the events of our future, especially the events of our, our eternal life because the Bible says, do not store up treasures on the earth where wrath and moths and thieves do corrupt, but store yourself up treasures in heaven where none of that can happen. So our seed and our sowing is changing the course of our future and rescheduling the events of our future. And that's the same in eternity for us. Oh, praise God. And so you want to you change the course of your future and make it brighter and bigger and better and more blessed and more favorable and more expansive? Then it's going to require sowing in this hour and sowing in today. You can retain, you can change. See, I don't know if I believe that. Well, just ask a, a couple. When a man sows a seed into a woman, they, they reschedule the events of their future by having a child. Their whole life changes. A farmer, when they sow their seed into the field, they reschedule the events of their future and bring increase to their lives. When the when the heavenly father, whoo, praise God, hallelujah. I don't want to, I don't want to stop tonight. It's too good. When the heavenly father sowed his son into the earth through the cross, through the grave, through the resurrection, he changed the events of the future for thousands and millions. And I would even say billions of people, praise God. And he changed the events of heaven and the course of heaven because heaven is now populated with the souls of humanity because the father took a present seed of his son sold him in the fullness of time, and he changed and rescheduled the events of the future. You can reschedule the events of your future by being a sower and sowing it by faith upon the promises of God. You say, I don't know what my future holds. Well, you start sowing, you'll start understanding what your future holds. When I sowed that seed for my child, I knew when I walked away, I was going to be a daddy because if God said it, he will not fail me. Praise God. As we sow our lives into others, we shall reap life. When we sow our finances, we shall reap finances and we shall reap increase. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 9 says that. Uh, uh, Malachi chapter 3 says that. When we sow the word, we will reap more of the word into our lives. When we sow faith, we shall reap faith. Anything that can reproduce has a seed within it. And that seed will also will always bring you to a greater amount of what you initially sowed. Praise God. Because everything that can reproduce has a seed. Must have a seed. Must be able to, to, to. It can only reproduce because of the seed. I'm closing with this. God said, he that soweth sparingly, as I said, Earlier, uh, reap us sparingly. Oh, let me, let me, I don't, I'm not going to stop. I got to read this. If you have to go, God bless you. Please share it, but don't go just yet. I just want to encourage you with this last scripture. Let's cl close with the word. I hope you enjoyed it tonight. I hope you enjoyed it tonight. It's encouraging your faith. Let's build ourselves up in our most holy faith because beloved, beloved, my beloved watching me, uh, if you're watching me live or if you're watching the recording, my beloved who I love dearly, I, I wish above all things, as John said, that you would prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Your family would be blessed. You'd multiply in every good thing, and you'd live in the bountifulness of God. I want to go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and I want to encourage you uh, again. But I say, he would sow as sparingly shall also reap sparingly. There it is. That's the law of sowing and reaping. I, I'm teaching you the word tonight, folks. And he would sow it bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Think, so, your harvest right now is contingent 
upon your decision of how much you want to sow. God has put it into your hands now. He has put it into your hands now. He's saying to you, he that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. He that sows bountifully shall be reap bountifully. Who, how do, big do you want your harvest to be? How big do you want your relationships to be? How big, how many friends, how good do you want your friendships to be? How blessed do you want your ministry to be, your finances to be, your opportunities to be, uh, your everything in life? How big do you want it to be? Well, the Bible says if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you shall reap bountifully. This is the promise of God. Every man according to his purpose in his heart. There it is. That's your decision, my decision. Again, the seed is a picture of our faith. And when we sow a seed, we reschedule the events of our future. Praise God. And that's our decision. And how much we do and how often we do is our decision. Praise God. How many harvests do you want? How often do you want harvest? It's all based upon the law and the power of the seed. I close with this. Every man according to his purpose in his heart, let him give not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. Not because of our circumstances alone. We don't just do that. We do. There's times that you do so. But he's talking about just don't do it because of your circumstances. Do it. Live it. That's what he's trying to say. He's have a lifestyle of it. There's people who have sown because of their circumstances in Scripture. and uh, But it's talking about having not doing it only because of that. Doing it as a lifestyle. Living it every day. Walk by faith every day in the law of sowing and reaping. Not grudgingly, not, but cheerfully. With expectation, with belief, with praise and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you will always have all sufficiency in all things. You may abound to every good work. I remember years ago, a man came up to Brother Shambach. He didn't like it, but the man said, I'm not blessed. And Brother Shambach said, that's because you're not a giver. And the man said, how dare you say that? He said, listen, sir. He said, he said, are you a Christian? Yes, I am. Is God's word true? Yes, it is. He said, well, there you go. He said, God, when people give, God says, I'm able to make all grace abound towards you where you will be sufficient in all things. He says, it's because you're not a giver. He said, if you were a giver and you give by faith and you give with thanksgiving and praise, you'll have sufficiency in all things. What a promise from God. Can somebody say amen? What a promise from God. What an invitation from the Father, from the Holy Spirit to activate our faith upon the law of sowing and reaping for every aspect of our lives. Oh, COVID-19, forget about you. Lockdowns, forget about you. We have a breakthroughs coming for the children of God. A move of God is coming to the earth and God is going to shake this earth. And I believe the Lord will give us a window of opportunity before the return of Jesus and before the world is led into the tribulation. God's people shall grow in abundance and influence and win souls and see revival and see the workings of the Spirit and see the power of signs, wonders, and miracles. Hallelujah. And see the pres His presence and His grace and His goodness and His kindness flowing towards all their lives. Nothing can stop the blessing of God in our lives. None of this can stop the blessing of God in our lives. Let's activate our faith upon the law of the power of the seed. I hope you enjoyed it tonight, family. God bless you. I love you, family, so much. And I just pray that you shall walk in the blessing and the abundance of God. Don't forget Parking Lot Church this Sunday, 11 a.m. It's been fantastic, and I'm proud of our church for continuing to press forward and gather together. If you, if you don't have a home church, Come and visit us in the parking lot this Sunday. We will receive you, and we will love you, and we will bless you. Praise God. That's this Sunday, 11 a.m., Kingdom Worship Center in Hamilton. Our website is kwc.church. If you do want to sow a seed, you can give there, kwc.church. But more importantly, we just want to see you. Your, your, we just want to see your smiling face, and we want to be a blessing to you. So all the information of the ministry is there, kwc.church. I look forward to seeing you. I won't be there Sunday. Pastor Ralph will be preaching again, family, as I'm still in quarantine. But I'll come on the radio to encourage you by faith again. But I get out next week. Praise God, I'm getting free next week. And I'm, I'm ready to ramp it up for Jesus. But I love you. I bless you. I declare the favor of God on you. 
I declare supernatural harvest and increase into your life. And I declare in this hour, these will be some of the greatest and best blessed days of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Have a fantastic night, everybody. Have a fantastic couple of days. I love you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, everybody.